It is the year 2056. The world is ruled by a ruthless dictator known as the governor. He has gripped the people in fear, and faith has been forgotten. Until the word of God was found, and its message spread rapidly through the world. Now, faith has been spreading, and hope rises among the masses, as God begins to do extraordinary things through ordinary people. Citizens, I bring you greetings. I am the Seeker. Have you lost faith? Do you feel that this is all that there is and nothing more? I have good news. There is hope. Watch, listen, and understand as I show you stories about how God is real. And when you put your faith in Him, it can change the world. I am Sarah King. You can call me the Seeker. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Although this isn't quite what I expected. Yeah. I found that I had to go underground to avoid detection by the drones. It's a good thing you're doing. People need to know God and believe in something again. What's going on out there? The governor's empire is coming to an end. How do you know? I have faith. I keep hearing of this word faith, but I have no evidence to what it actually is. Faith is being sure of the things we hope for and knowing something is real even if we can't see it. It's not about evidence. Sarah, I want to know how you found this kind of faith. When I married my husband Abraham, we found out right away that I couldn't bear children. But medicine is so advanced. It's rare that someone can't have children today. I guess I'm rare and Abraham never ever made me feel like he loved me less. We just learned to accept that that was the way things were going to be. But then something happened. What? God spoke to Abraham. What does God sound like? I don't know. You'll have to ask Abraham that question. But from what he told me, it sounds like the way we're talking right now. So when God spoke, what did God say? That I would become pregnant. That's impossible. The beautiful thing is that with God, all things are possible. This is my son, Isaac. Trying to do the math. How old is this picture? It looks like it was taken recently. I wouldn't have believed it either, but I had Isaac at the ripe young age of 90. 90? I would have never guessed you were 90. <laughs> well, I have good genes. <laughs> but the amazing thing is God told Abraham that he would be a great leader a leader that would be key to the end of the governor. Does the governor know about all of this? God told Abraham in the beginning that we would leave our positions in power and leave the governor. But your husband was a pretty powerful advisor. He just left all of that. He did it before I even became pregnant. That's faith seeker. That's complete trust in something and we put that faith in God. We took up new names. We lived in a part of the country where the governor couldn't find us, and we waited for the promise to come true. But God wasn't done speaking. How often does God speak? As often as we're willing to listen, but this time what he had to say was hard. What could God say that would be hard? He gave you everything you always wanted. The governor finally found us, and he wanted our son Isaac. Abraham was ready to run, but God had other plans. What did God say? We had to give up our son, Isaac. What, what kind of God is that? Who would do something like this? Why would you give something to someone and then immediately take it away? Part of faith is having trust. It's never easy. And sometimes it asks us to do hard things. But, but how could you do it? How could you kill your only son? Absolute faith in a God you know has your best interest at heart. It was incredibly hard, but we knew it was better to obey and suffer than to disobey and succeed. God seems to talk in riddles, Sarah. God speaks out of love, 
and everything he says and does is out of love for us. But he wanted you to sacrifice your son, a son that he promised, a son who could change the world. Exactly, a son he promised. What kind of pride would I have to question the one who gave us a miracle in the first place? So, what happened? When the agents of the governor came to take our son, Abraham gave him up willingly. It was so hard. When I saw my son being delivered into the hands of the enemy, every instinct in me wanted to lash out. But I never stopped believing that God would come through. He never lost my faith. I looked into my son's eyes for what I thought was the last time. And my heart broke in a million pieces. I hugged him. I messed his hair a little bit. Never wanted to let him go. And then the agents ripped him from my arms and loaded him up into a truck. I muffled my screams into Abraham's chest so I didn't want to give those men the pleasure of hearing me cry. Then something happened. We heard a crash and immediately we ran outside and the very truck that they loaded my son in was overturned and ready to explode. The door was open. Abraham was able to retrieve our son. God provided an escape. Where were the guards? Knocked out. After we were back inside, the truck exploded. The governor never came looking for us again. Everyone was reported dead. God always seems to be one step ahead of everything. That's why he's the only one I would put my faith in. Thank you for your story. Don't lose hope. Have faith, Seeker. The governor's days are numbered. You have heard a story of amazing faith and of God's astounding power. Faith is not easy, and it's not something you can hold, and at times it can be hard to have. But God never lets us down and his ways are definitely above our own. Hope will spread, and hold on to your faith. Do not give up. This is The Seeker. That was an incredible story from Sarah, wasn't it? Their biggest desire in life is to have kids, but they find out they can't. Then God tells them eventually they would have a son, and he would lead the people. You could imagine how excited they were, and I bet they couldn't wait for it to happen. But then when they finally have their son, God tells Sarah and Abraham to give their son to the governor. That had to have been an incredibly difficult and devastating moment for them. But because of their faith, they trusted and obeyed God. And after that truck crashes and they get their son back, they realize why God allowed it and that God had a bigger plan. The story we just watched was taken out of the book of Genesis 18 and 22. Now they're really long stories, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to just go ahead and read them for yourself whenever you get the chance. But I'm just gonna sum it up really quickly for you. In Genesis 18, God told them that they had a year and they would have a baby. Well, Sarah laughs about this because they're both like really, really old, way too old to have children, like way older than your grandparents. But God's like, man, is there anything I can't do? I don't think so. Okay, God wasn't like that, but he did promise them that they would have a kid even though it was physically impossible. A year later, they gave birth to a son named Isaac and God had delivered on his promise. But then years later, God tells Abraham that he wants him to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. What does this mean? Abraham is supposed to kill his son. Not only would he be killing his son, he'd be killing all of his hopes and dreams and all of his promises that God has made. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but that's just what happened. Read it for yourself in the Bible. But Abraham stays faithful to God and proceeds to go through with it. But at the last minute, God stops him and he spares his son's life. You see, Abraham and, and Sarah showed so much faith in God. They believed that God would give them a kid even though it was physically impossible. And then they were willing to do whatever God said to do with that child. They had faith. But what is faith really? What, what does faith really mean? Well, look at what it says in Hebrews 11.1. 1. 
Faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. I, I love that verse so much. It tells us exactly what faith is. It's being certain and sure of what we hope for. That God and heaven are very real. That Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Even though we can't exactly see those things yet, we're sure that we'll get to see all that one day and trust in that. We know that it's real, even though we can't fully see it yet. That's what faith is all about. Sometimes when I meet people, they'll ask me what I do for a living, and I'll tell them that I work for a church. And sometimes the response is like, oh, you're like, like one of those religious people, huh? And I always reply to them, no, I'm, I'm actually not really that religious at all. But I do absolutely believe that God is real and that he created everything and that he loves me and he loves you and I believe that Jesus died for your sins and my sins and because of that, we can spend eternity with God in heaven. So let me ask you, do you view being a Christian as a religion or a faith? If you view it as a religion, well, that means it's like following a bunch of do's and don'ts and trying to always get things right. But if you view being a Christian as faith, having faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you can't quite see. And I promise you, having faith will change your life and make you confident in what you believe. So my prayer for you is that you will continue in your faith and that you will live it out for everyone to see.